Hello and welcome to uh, my uh, webinar about um, something I like to call Anytime Real-Time Learning. Um, the title of my presentation is Inspire, Engage, Connect, and Share. Uh, my name is Julie Coiro. I'm a professor of the School of Education uh, in, at the University of Rhode Island, which is in the United States. Um, and for those of you joining us, uh, you'll notice there's um, a bit.ly website where you can access the slides by yourself and you can also use your cell phone um, with the camera and access the information uh, on the slides with a QR code. So the plan for this uh, webinar is actually in three pieces and so uh, this first segment is about the first part here, what inspired anytime real-time learning and what does it involve and the other two sessions will be about the other two questions. So we'll get started with the first part of this webinar. And again, the question is, what inspired anytime real-time learning and what does it involve? So the evolution of this idea came from uh, some work that uh, my colleague and I, Renee Hobbs, uh, were working on. Uh, we had held a summer institute in digital literacy for a number of years. And just like everyone else, when 2020 hit and the pandemic arrived, we all needed to figure out how to move what was a very um, in-person kind of uh, set of learning opportunities into something different. Um, and the challenge was that our learning sp spaces kept changing. Sometimes we were expected to be face-to-face, -face, other times we were hybrid, other times we were remote. Um, we ended up feeling really disconnected from our students. Uh, and in my work with a lot of teachers, the big question was, how can I possibly plan to do something intentional amidst all of this confusion? And so that's really where this framework evolved from. So as we started thinking about how we can create a learning space that was entirely virtual, um, but still hold on to what we thought was important about teaching and learning, we really reflected for a few minutes on our core values. So I'm gonna invite you to think as we talk about this idea of any time, real-time learning, what's important in your classroom space? And for us, you can see up here, we had um, things that were important about collaborating and learning from other people and the power of two. Uh, yes, we talked about and used digital media literacy. We also um, had many components of leadership that we wanted to get across content-wise. Process-wise, we wanted to make sure when we were creating this new digital space that we still held on to that rich content, but we also had some kind of flexible format. And that meant that for us, Rather than face-to-face, um, -face, normally we had an environment that from Sunday morning until Friday night, uh, we were together. And we really couldn't expect that to happen in a virtual Zoom space where we couldn't expect people to be online all the time. So we really kind of thought about, well, how could we create a space where there was some time that we were focused on learning and talking with each other in real time, and then at the same time, there was a flexible time where we didn't all have to be together in the same space at the same time, but we could learn similar content and engage in conversations together around that content. So that's where the idea came from. The words anytime, real time, really are analogous with asynchronous and synchronous. Um, one of the challenges was, quite frankly, we couldn't remember how to spell those two words. But more importantly, as we talked with teachers, we couldn't quite remember which was which. And the implication or uh, the inference was that everything was about technology and digital. And really, we wanted it to be about learning and being together. And so anytime took the place of asynchronous as thinking about learning together at different times and real time replaced synchronous thinking about learning together at the same time. So I mentioned those core values, the three core values that we really wanted to focus on our principles was our learning space digital or not. The goal was to connect learners, guide learners, and to have learners create together. 
and the four practices that we wanted to do that with moved from inspire and engage to connect and share. So we took those high level ideas and we moved them into thinking about how could that um, frame both our teaching goals and student outcomes as well as what the time would look like in practice. So the ideas here, if you can imagine real time, um, is if we're all in the classroom together, even if it's all in a Zoom space where we're looking at each other, we're talking, we have an opportunity um, to make sure we can engage together. And so as teachers, our goal there was to connect and share. And there's lots of options where we could connect through asking our students to collaborate or listen or consider some things. And then the sharing could happen at any time in that real-time learning. We might ask students to design or create or revise or respond. And so those were the teaching goals in the bold at the top. And then the learning outcomes or the activities that we engage them in was here in the uppercase. And then what you see down here in the bottom is really kind of a, a lesson structure. So if we're meeting in real time for an hour or 45 minutes or even 20 minutes, at the beginning we greet you, we synthesize, we might model something, we pull ideas together, and then as quick as possible we get you into breakout rooms or small groups and give you something to talk about. Maybe we prompt you with some questions that we ask you. What do you notice? What do you wonder? During that real time, we're creating opportunities and digital spaces for you to document your thinking and conversation together. And then towards the end, we wrap up and we clarify. And often what happens is we then leave the real time space and there's time between then and the next time for any time learning. And so what happens in the any time learning then is this flexible time sometime before you meet or we meet again, we want you to do some homework, if you will. But it's not your typical framed homework. Again, we have two teacher goals and several student activities and outcomes. And so the goal of our any time learning homework assignments, if you will, is first to inspire our learners and second, to engage them. And so we might inspire them by asking them to watch or read and then wonder about something. But inspiring learners isn't enough. We want them to actually engage in something for that deep learning so that they can learn from each other in this asynchronous space, if you will, anytime, and document their exploration, their analysis, their commenting, the reaction, all this is done anytime in a flexible kind of space, but it's done in a digital way so that we can pull it back together. And now they work on their homework anytime, and then we can bring it back to the real time and have a conversation about what they've documented together. So in essence, here's what we mean by keeping at the forefront learning together, whether it's at the same time or different times, making sure there's opportunities to connect, guide, and create, and then thinking flexibly about how you might use these four goals. There is a template here for those of you who are following along, and here's an opportunity for you uh, to kind of walk through and think about some of the um, ways that you might fill in this template um, using the ideas that we've talked about here. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this back into the big space. So there's two more other points we wanted to make here. One was the idea about, well, now that I've created these anytime and real-time spaces, how do digital texts and tools play a role? And this is really um, a continuum of thinking about multiple ways that we might select technologies, whether they're texts or tools, to help students support them in acquiring or building their knowledge, expressing their knowledge, or on the higher end, reflecting on and acting on their knowledge. And the verbs here on the bottom are really, again, back to these engaging outcomes 
um, that help map us out to selecting texts and tools and tasks that either ask students to identify and interpret for acquiring or building knowledge or really moving into critique and analyze um, and making a difference and acting on knowledge. So these kinds of verbs um, and the higher end of the continuum is really where the research suggests students are mo most engaged. And so the question is how do we create spaces and provide texts and tools that engage students across the continuum but geared toward um, the further the right end. And so this is just a, a chart that you'll be able to visit when you have a little more time to kind of look at the content. But there are links for you to follow that link you to examples of digital tools and digital texts. The texts enrich knowledge building, mostly teacher guided. The tools enrich and expand knowledge creation, mostly guided by learners. So as we wrap up this portion of the, the webinar, I really want you to kind of think back, um, hit pause, hit stop, take some time to process and reflect some of the components of anytime real-time learning. Think about the core values in your own classroom. Thinking about the key practices and the digital tools that you might use, always guided by those learning outcomes, some that may be knowledge outcomes and others that might be social emotional goals like building relationships, valuing and listening to each other, and making connections. And so as we wrap up this first part of the webinar, I want to encourage you to talk with your colleagues about how you might envision a lesson that incorporates any time and real time possibilities to promote engagement and deepen learning. The template link is here for you. and once you begin with the lesson, then you can expand to a unit, and so on and so forth. So thank you very much.